Hi there, Nathan Patrick Taylor here, and I'm back again with another video that was suggested from a viewer. Left a comment asking me to demonstrate the SUMIF function in Alteryx. Now, it's been a while since I've used the SUMIF function myself, so I went out to the Microsoft website and support section and just made sure that I understood how this function works. The name gives it away, pretty much sums the values. Uh, if you give it a range of data based on uh, the criteria that you're going to specify, so I could say sum column A for every cell if that cell contains a value greater than 30. All right, I can do that. Uh, and then there's a couple of different examples in here. So the first one has just straight numeric examples where column A has a property value. Uh, the, the example says if that uh, column's value uh, cell individual cells within that column are greater than 160,000 then sum the commission portion of it So sum the commission only if it's greater than 160,000 remember that example because I'm going to do one just like that then the second example is looking at uh, Text data so it's saying in column a which contains a category like fruits vegetables There's also a blank in there. It's saying if that particular category is a fruit then some column C, which is the, the sales uh, value there. All right, so I actually took this into Excel and replicated this myself. So I've got an Excel spreadsheet that's got that second example in here, and I've got three different versions of this. One is where I'm going in and I'm summing the fruits. So I'm saying for column A, sum, uh, sum the cells if that cell is category fruits and sum the sales amount that's in there. So for fruits, uh, there were only two. There was an $800 sale and a $1,200 sale, so that's $2,000. For the next example, I did a numeric version, and this does not have that uh, both search criteria and the range to sum. It just says if the sale is greater than $1,000, then sum it, and the total of that is $13,200. And then the last one is another compound one, but it's numeric, and it's saying if the sale was greater than $2,500, then uh, sum the commission, which was that first example that I looked at. Okay, so now let's go over to Alteryx, and let's try and, and replicate some of this inside Alteryx. So I've got it spun up here. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to pull in that exact same Excel spreadsheet that I just uh, showed you. So I've got that in a temp folder here. I'm just going to drag and drop that onto my canvas. This sheet is called Sum If Examples. So we'll go ahead and take that and click OK. Uh, I have the tool highlighted. I'm going to hit my keyboard shortcut Control Shift B just to put a browse tool at the end. And then Control R will go ahead and run our workflow and just look, make sure the data is coming in correctly. And it is. Now what we want to do is we want to drop my my example column. So we're going to use a select tool and we're going to go in and just get rid of the examples and the sum if total on there. I don't I don't need those. We'll run it again and just make sure that it looks uh, fine. Good. That's all I really wanted. So let's do that first example, which is where we are summing the fruits uh, values of the sales for those for just fruits. OK, so let's go ahead and do that now. You have to think a little bit differently when it comes to Alteryx, where inside Excel you're giving it a very directed uh, formula or function that you want it to use. But inside Alteryx we can go a little bit more broad than that, and this problem is actually super easy, easy to solve. Uh, and just a basic summary tool will do that here. So I can take the sum tool and I can group it on the category, which is where the fruits sit. So I'll group by category, and then I just want to sum the sales. So I select sales and choose sum. And that's pretty much all I have to do. I'll hit Control R again on the keyboard, and I'm done. And I look at the value, and you'll see there's the fruit, uh, two thousand uh, dollars in sales. That matches with my Excel spreadsheet example. Now, if I only wanted the fruits to come out of this, I could just grab a filter tool uh, from here and drag that on and filter only for fruits if that's the only thing that I I was looking for. Okay, so that's that's the first example. Let's go ahead and do the second one if we go back to our Excel spreadsheet here. The second one is summing values that are over $100,000, okay? So this one, again, we have to think in terms of the flow of data, okay? So I'm gonna delete the summary tool and I'm gonna add a filter tool here. All right, so we'll drop the filter tool. To, and this is sort of that if functionality now. I wanna say if the sales um, are greater than a thousand. Okay, so we'll just put a thousand in there. So I'm going to get it to split. 
into two ways. The true part will have the sales that are greater than a thousand and the false part will have sales that are less than a thousand. And we can add browse tools after both parts. If we hit control shift B, we'll get it. If we right click on the context menu, you'll see that we can add all browses. So browses after both. Hit control R and then we'll run our example here. And what do we see? Uh, in that top part, we have sales that are that are over a thousand and um, it's uh, it's going to sum those for us, right? If we have, uh, or I'm sorry, we haven't done the sum part yet. It's just making sure that the sales part is greater than a thousand, and on the bottom part, the sales are less than a thousand. Okay, I can actually remove those. I don't I don't want those now. I'm just doing that as a step to make sure I did it right. Now we can go in and add the summary tool, and we'll add one to both portions here. All right, and now we need to configure it. So I want to sum sales, so this makes it this makes it pretty easy for me. So we're just gonna sum sales, and just for for uh, giggles, we'll go ahead and do the bottom one as well. We'll sum both of them, and then we can run this workflow and see the output there. So the sum of sales that were more than a thousand was thirteen thousand two hundred, and that's exactly what we got in the Excel spreadsheet. All right, um, and then we have the bottom one, of course, sales that were less were less than a thousand, or equal to or less than a thousand. Actually, we get that by default, kind of an added bonus. Okay, let's go ahead and do the last example, and that one is I want to do sort of this compound uh, sum if I want to sum a different uh, column than than what was in the default setting of the formula here. So I want to sum the commission, but I only want to sum the commission if the sale was greater than $2,500. Okay, so let's go back to Alteryx again. And let's go ahead and uh, we're going to just modify the filter that we already have in place. All right, so this is going to be if the sale is greater than 2,500. Okay, that fixes that part. Now I'm going to go into the summarize piece here. And uh, now I need to change what I'm summarizing. So I'm going to delete sales from here. So we'll remove that and we're going to add in commission okay and we're going to say add we want to just sum the commission and again for giggles we're going to go down and we're going to do the bottom one too just summing the the commission all right um, and then we can go ahead and run this this workflow and you'll see at the end of it we get 679 for sales that were greater than 2500 and if we go back to our excel spreadsheet you'll see that's the same thing okay so very quickly we're able to make changes and adjustments to what we want to uh, summarize and, and what the conditions are and the, and the filters are for the if portion of that statement works really well. Okay, this is one way of doing it. We're going to pause for a moment, come back, and then we're going to do a different type of sum if. Okay, now we can start the second part of doing a sum if, and this one's a little bit different. This is almost like transposing a data set and trying to sum it row-wise rather than column-wise. And that is sometimes a use case for using the sum if function, and that's why I wanted to show you how to do this inside Alteryx. So what I've got here is just some fake data, a sample data set where I, I have maybe some marketing or some, uh, some click data where I've got whether a person received an ad, clicked a link, made a person purchase, or used a coupon. Uh, and it's just a yes or a no to all of those. And I'm, I'm looking for somebody who did all four of those things, or maybe I'm looking for somebody who did none of them or, or some variation of it, okay? So here, uh, what I need to do now is do something that's a little bit odd. I don't think I've ever covered this in any of my videos, and that's adding the record ID, okay? And it's gonna seem strange why I'm doing that, but I'm gonna add the record ID in and then run the workflow. And you'll see that the, the rows now have numbers that's actually in the data set. It's just not displayed as part of the browse, but it's in the data set, okay? And it'll make sense why I'm doing that here in a minute. Now I'm gonna use the transpose tool, and I wanna take that data because we wanna sum it uh, across the rows rather than in the columns, but in order to sum it, I need it to be uh, in a column format. So we're gonna transpose it. This, this particular tool is a little bit bizarre on how it gets set up. Uh, and so I encourage you to take some time uh, to look at how this particular tool works. Uh, but what we want to do here is we want to select the record ID as our key column. So that's what's going to remain in our data set as a column. And then we want to take the rest of the columns, the data columns, 
and uh, and leave them uh, as individual rows. That's the part that's going to get transposed. So received add was a column and clicked link was a column. Now those are gonna be rows in the data set. So let's go ahead and run it. And uh, you'll see what I mean when we look at the data set. So I've got now instead of just four rows, I've got 16 rows. Uh, the, the four columns by the four rows. And each individual row is the record, the, it, basically a unique uh, compilation of the record and the name, and then the value associated with that individual record, okay? Now what I need to do is I need to take these rows and I need to determine if it contains a yes or a no. So we're gonna go over to the preparation palette and we're gonna choose a formula tool. All right, let's take the formula tool, drop it on to our canvas there. And I always like creating this as a new column, so we'll create a column called count yes. All right, make sure to change this to an integer because that's the value that's gonna be stored in there. And then we're just gonna use an if statement, okay? So we'll start typing if, we'll take this first one as a template here. If the value uh, equals a yes, Okay, uh, then we want it to contain the value one. If it does not, it's just gonna be zero. Okay, it's an integer, we're good to go. Let's run it just to make sure this looks okay. Look back at our data set here and we see that the count yes is one or a zero, one for y, zero for now. Now I need to go back and sum this. I've got it in column wise data here. So let's go back and let's sum it. We are going to take the record ID now as the uh, group by, and we want the count yes to be what we're going to sum. All right, let's go ahead and run that again. And now we can see that we have two, three, two, and four, which is correct based on the data set that we have two Y's in the first row, three in the second, two Y's in the third, and all four of them in the last row. Okay, now what I need to do is get this joined back up to the original data set, which contained all of the values. So we're gonna to go to the join menu, choose a join tool, okay? We'll take that. And then we're going to drag from the output of the record ID into the left join of the join tool. And here the record ID is our, is our primary key, so we can bring those both together. We're gonna to, um, leave everything checked except the second record ID. I don't really need that anymore. All right, and then what I like to do, this is just a, a sanity and validity check here. I like to right click and say, add all browsers afterwards. All right, and if everything works perfectly, there should be nothing in the left join and nothing in the right outer. There should just be the inner join, which has the four fields that we want with the count. And we can now we can do whatever I want with it. I can now have a filter or an if statement where I can say I only want records that did all four of those things where the count of Y's was four. Or I could say I don't want the count of four. I want anything less. So zero, one, two, and three. All right, so that's one way of solving this problem. All right, now there's a second way that you can do this. And I'm gonna give myself a little bit of space here so we can see that. The second way is to think of this as a, as a problem where we're gonna sum up um, all of the individual columns again, rather than transposing this whole entire thing. And I'm gonna introduce another tool that, that I don't think I've ever done or used or showed before, and that's the multi-formula tool. Now, before we just did a formula and we had to perform it on each of the rows, but here I can bring in the multi-formula tool and we'll connect our, our data set to it. And there's a little bit of configuration that goes on with this tool. And it, this is just like transpose. I urge you to spend a little bit of time understanding this tool uh, because there is some setup. In fact, I may show this wrong just so you can see what it looks like when you get in, get an error to go back and, and set it up the right way. Sometimes generating those errors is, is helpful in figuring out how this works. I'm going to give myself a bit more space uh, on the canvas here and on the, the left navigation pane. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is uh, we are going to create an if statement inside this uh, particular tool. So uh, we can go and um, come back and go to our, our conditional statements again and create an if statement. All right, drop it in there. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different, though. We're going to say if uh, the current field, so under the variables tab, if the current field uh, equals single quote y, just like we did before, then one 
uh, else we want it to be a zero. Okay, now we get an invalid type operator here. And the reason why that's happening is because this tool at by default chose the record ID field is the field that we want to iterate through. Remember, this is a multi field formula tool. The multiple fields we want to go through are actually text type fields. So we want all four of these. Okay. Now you'll notice the error goes away. Works perfectly fine. The other thing I want to do is I don't want a prefix. I want a suffix. And this is going to go to, onto the end. So I'm going to say underscore uh, flag F A F L A G. And here, uh, I'm just going to flag it, a 1 or a 0, to indicate if that particular field contained a yes or a no. And I'm going to change the output type to int 16. All right. What I just did was really important. And you go to sum this, you're going to get an error if you've left it as a text field. All right. So that looks good. Let's click off the tool and see if it removes all of the errors. It does. Looks OK. All right. Let's go ahead and run this one more time. And uh, make sure we see the output here where the Y is a 1, the no is a 0, and so on. So it went through, spun through all of those fields, uh, multiple at a time, and gave us the, the 1 or the 0. All right, now I need to actually sum this. And so we're going to bring back the formula tool and we'll drop that in. And here, again, I always like to create a new column. So I'm going to add a new column called count yes, just like I did before. And this time, we're going to sum the field. So I'm going to use a left bracket. And remember, we're summing the flags that were created. So we're going to say plus received ed clicked. Uh, then we're going to say plus again. And we'll do the made purchase. And then the last one is going to be the uh, used a coupon. OK, so those are all together. Again, make sure your output type here is going to be int 16. All right, so we can count those and we're good. We'll run it just as an intermediary step here. Make sure it worked correctly and the counts look good. I'm totally fine with that. Now, as an added step, um, we could have overwritten the fields that are in the multi field tool so that, uh, that the output isn't copied, it just overwrites. Um, and then that would eliminate the step that I'm going to do now, which is to bring in a select tool and get rid of all of the flags. I don't really need those in there. We can go option, uh, select, and then deselect those highlighted fields. And then we get a much cleaner uh, output when we're done here. So again, I have the record ID, what was selected, yes or no, and then the counts at the end. So just to highlight or reiterate the difference between the two. They, they both have the same outcomes. This requires quite a few more tools in order to get there. In fact, I have to rejoin the data back together again. This one is much simpler. On a larger data set, it would probably process much faster, but it does require a little bit more advanced knowledge on using the multi-field formula tool. All right, so we went through two ways of doing the sum if uh, replicating that in, in uh, Alteryx from Excel, one doing it column wise and the other one doing it row wise. Again, I love feedback, so go ahead and leave a comment in the video description or in the comment section, I should say, and uh, tell me what you want to hear about next. Thanks.